Paul, is there a coach's explanation of how your team has been so ready and capable of capitalizing on the mistakes your opposition has made in this series? I think really good players. Like, I think when we defend, we defend usually in a group so that things that are broken off that play, there are options. So it's not an isolation game. That if, if something goes, you know, we occasionally will spring a player, but that, that wouldn't be our starting point. So the vast majority of those plays never um, result in anything. It's not like we're not going to puck down and generating 16 to 8 chances on a team in a game. The vast majority of our time, especially against Edmonton, is defending as a group. And um, I think the, the difference would be, that's not the right word. The, the, the way that I would describe our game would then be it's actually a fairly patient offensive game. So if there's something good there, we'll, we'll, we'll try it. And if not, we won't force it. Right side, fourth row. Hey, uh, Paul, we, we talk a lot about players controlling their emotions, but you have a chance to fulfill a childhood dream in a couple of days. How does a coach control his emotion or – or, or maintain that uh, even keel when you're so close to something you've wanted for such a long time? Well, let's just be clear. You're in the fifth row, not the fourth row. <laughs> I don't feel responsible for answering that question. Um, well, you have to have a plan, and that plan can't come in yesterday. Right? You're, you're very careful about walking into the room as a coach with something they haven't heard before at this time of the year. So we would have talked about our recovery post game, and they've done that not just in the uh, playoffs, in the regular season, we have a plan. And I'm looking forward to going to bed. <laughs> so I'm going to keep my focus on that, enjoy the heck out of it. If I'm fortunate enough to wake up, I got a plan for tomorrow. And then I'm not looking anywhere past that. I can't count, sorry, Paul. <laughs> right side, second row. It's critical. <laughs> Looking in the fourth row, I don't see anybody. Who's he talking about? Sean already asked a question. Why don't you go back to him? He's in the third row. Got a lot of issues here. Uh, Paul. Um, Hang on. What row and where are you? Second, left. Thank you. Far left to where you're. Um, Paul, you know. You guys, are just, uh, you understand that they're, yeah. they're, they're trying to give me a tan here, you're right? Blind. Okay. Um, you talked uh, this morning just about Parkov and how we might see the offensive side of him today. Obviously, he gets the win yeah. goal, but. First goal, that was him in a nutshell, makes the incredible defensive play, the strong play along the wall, and finds Lake Guy. Like, a couple of days ago, we were worried if he was going to even play tonight. Just his imprint on the game, uh, how big was it? Some of the games that he's played this year where he's had the most impact, he doesn't show up on the score sheet. And then what his gift is, he defines everyone else's game. Alexander Barkov, this is what I'm willing to do. This is how I'm going to play the game. So if you think of being a rookie coming to training camp, and this is my favorite line of all rookies, I just got to play my game. You, you don't have a game, right? You, you don't have one. But that guy's got a game. Why don't you just play like him? That, that's his... Talk about quiet leadership. We think about it, and I learned too as I go. He's he's a, a unique personality, um, but his consistency with that game and the number of nights that he's not on the score sheet necessarily, that everybody on the bench is going, "Oh my God, that guy's a player." That's his gift to us. Left side, second row, Jameson. Uh, coach, after they pull Skinner, they don't get a shot on goal over the last minute thirty or so. It's kind of been a calling card for your team, closing out games. Just how impressed you. You with your team's ability to kind of always run out the clock at the end of these games? Ooh, we gave up one, though. Um, we did. The offense generated in the third period was more uh, contextual. Like, we got a big lead. And the first one goes in off Nico, off the post, almost behind it. So it kind of like a bad break, and you don't like that. The next one's a good tip, but, but it's also not, it's not a three-pass play or nine guys at the net kind of play. So I think we gave up six in the third. One of them was 
the best the best chance that Evan had did, didn't go in, and that's Sergey Bobrovsky. So you have that faith in him in the net that, that if something breaks loose, and it's going to, no matter how hard you play defensively, no matter how good your structure is, those guys are getting looks, and that's that's his role. Right side, second row, Matt. Just kind of building off that, guys blocking shots in the final five minutes, up one goal, doing whatever they have to to hold on. Is it moments, are, are moments like that what it takes for a, a team to potentially win a Stanley Cup final? Well, you don't get here without it. So what would happen at the end of this game would have had to have happened in three series prior, and it did. So we, we're 2-2 against the New York Rangers, and we score an overtime winner to change possibly the course of what happens. But in that game, yeah, I mean, the block there is every bit of as important as the block tonight. And it just all the small moments string together to give you a chance. But you got, they got to keep coming. Right? There's, there, there's no change in the game. I mean, sure, every, both teams block big shots. Both teams compete so hard. And at the end of it, it's two great teams. It's two inches inside a post and two inches outside a post. And there's no fault at any man on the ice for, the, for that not happening. We'll take two more left side, second row, Luke. Uh, post game, a lot of your players seem very business like. The, the quotes could have been from a regular season game in February. Right. How much of that do you think is just a show to the public? Or uh, it, wh where does that come from? Is that how they really are right now? Uh, every team's got its own personality. And I, and I can say this, and I, I think you will have faith in the fact, because that I've said it before, this is a different group. And they have been serious since training camp. They've been focused and even keeled over the course of the year. So we had three blocks of hockey that we didn't love. And I got, the first two got corrected really, really quickly. And that was basically by them. You showed a couple things we didn't, we can't do, and then off they went. So but, they're, they're, I mean, they're not a whole lot different today than they were three weeks ago. They've had a pretty good program. The player's been running that room for the year. It's from training camp. They've been running that room. I, I mean, I pop in every once in a while and say hello. You got the mic, so I'm assuming it's your question, my friend. But hang on. Last one. First, front row, first row, first seat on the left. <laughs> I'm just waiting for permission. Uh, Paul, I wanted to ask you, you talked earlier about Will almost fueling skill. And I'm curious for your defensive game, how important is the ability of your players to battle against the boards? It seems to be such a key part of your game, and everybody buys into it. And yeah. then you look at the last minute of that game where Ekblad just holds the puck against the yeah. wall and never gives them another shot. And I thought Edmonton might have had the advantage on us at parts earlier in the game. So that's a whole skill that I don't even know I appreciate I got an idea, I can get a guy there, and I can get him there, and I can yell at him to win the battle. But when you, when you see like elite hand skills, we always see, and we, we get it too here in Florida, like he, I understand why you would watch Connor McDavid and go, oh my God, I've never seen that before. That's incredible, right? And Barky does those things. But the hand skills on the wall, and it, 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 we talk about will, and, and a big part of that is staying in, taking the battle, like fighting. But the hand skills at the very end, the scrum in that back corner was pretty good, right? There's a lot of really good players within three feet of each other and just being able to keep the puck on the wall. It, it's an absolute skill. We're playing in the Stanley Cup final. There's nobody not battling on the wall anymore. Like, the stakes are too high. So you're getting everybody's best effort. It doesn't always work. And for the Oilers and for, for the Panthers, a lot of the game are yeah, pucks that just bounce, that just couldn't get a stick on it, right? And if you do, everything changes. So what you're left with is, you know, fight your ass off on that wall and do the best you can. 